Welcome everybody again to another episode of GE Wrestling. I'm Jamie. I'm here with uh, Ryan, Freddie, and Maddie, and we're here for our next time to talk about uh, the happenings in wrestling this week. And this week we're going to be talking about Genesis. Right. It's a big competitor to Super Nintendo. It's um, from the 16. I think you meant the TNA pay-per-view that I wasn't here about that. Yeah, uh, no, no one does. I okay. thought for sure when we'd be talking about Genesis, we'd be talking about... I think we're going to skip that. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we're going to be talking about TNA Genesis. Uh, we're going to address all the things that happened on Genesis, as well as our opinions of it. Um, I think there's a little bit of an issue we're having, is that pretty much... Well, let's, let me check something. Did you watch TNA Genesis? What's TNA Genesis? Okay. Did, did you watch TNA Genesis? No, I did not watch that protest. Okay. Our show is suffering some from the same thing that everybody else is, and it's that not many people watch TNA pay-per-views. Um, I really like TNA a lot, and I wish that wasn't the case. But I've got great news. I read the results of TNA Genesis on the internet, which is a good start. And a superhero in this day and age. I took one for the team. Ryan actually watched TNA Genesis. I, I did. Um, did Sonic appear? He did not. Um, that would have made the show a little more watchable, I think. Um, but I gotta tell you, I want to preface by saying I'm gonna do my recap of what happened to the guys who don't know. These guys don't actually know at all. I, I, I already I know nothing. You read results, I know, but these guys don't know anything that happened to the show. So this is gonna be their live reaction. I, um, I want to preface something, though. I don't want people to think I'm a blind TNA uh, hater, as the term is now. Uh, I don't hate TNA. I don't just rail on TNA because I don't like the company. I think they were once good companies. You see, I've got a Voodoo Kid Mafia shirt. I was a huge proponent of TNA in 2007 and early 2008, and the company right now is just not very good, and my opinions are reflected based on what I saw as my own opinions. They're not based on some blind hatred for a company. I don't take sides. At any rate... TNA Genesis. So, this night, basically the main plot going into this pay-per-view was that uh, Immortal, for whatever reason, wants to gain control of all the belts within TNA. And they think that if they have control of the belts, they have control of the company, which, you know, whatever, okay, I'll go with it. It's wrestling, so it's been disproved, we'll deal with it. So what they... That makes sense to me. Okay, well... I was okay with that <laughs> storyline. Fair enough. Okay, so that's... Right on. Okay, so we, we go into pay-per-view. The, the first match of the evening is Kazarian representing Immortal and Fortune uh, versus current TNA X Division champion Jay Lethal. Um, this match was solid. It's an X Division match, uh, basically, between the two of them there. And then there was a few missed spots, but nothing major, and they went through back and forth. It was kind of bland. Uh, that might just be my personal take, because I'm not particularly interested in Jay Lethal since he stopped the Black Machismo character. Uh, and Kazarian has all of the personality of uh, Keanu Reeves and Corpse. So... I wasn't tremendously impressed with the actual build-up for this uh, match, but it was uh, in ring work was solid. However, where this really hit a brick wall for me, and this was a continuing problem throughout the entire evening, in my opinion, was that the endings of the matches had to be explained by tabs of all people in order for the audience to understand what the hell was going on. Um, so this 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 match ended with a low blow um, from Kazarian, followed by his finishing move, uh, which I'm forgetting the name of currently. Uh, on a Jay Lethal. No, 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 it was, it was his, uh... It's, it, his, his it's like a reverse The reverse Tombstone Pod Driver. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. It's a sick move. It's a cool looking move. No, don't get me wrong. Here's another thing, before I even get to the ending. Uh, Kazarian kicked out a two finisher, maybe only one, I think two though, uh, finishers of Jay Lethal, and he kicked out of both of those, and Jay Lethal went down right to the low blow and the Tombstone, which, okay, I'll buy it, uh, although that's gonna, I just want to make mention of that now, because it's gonna play into a complaint we have later on about some player matches. But anyway, so that's great. He hit the low blow and he hit the reverse tombstone with the match. Yay. Only problem, low blow didn't happen on screen because TNA's production values are terrible and they didn't actually catch it happening. So, they missed the low so blow. Taz had to convey to people that Jay Lethal was low blow and that's how he got the opening because he was about to go hit some random flippy doop off the top. And he presumably because he ran up like a bunch of the crotch while he was up there or something. They didn't actually show it, so I don't know. Um, so the money shot was not there. Right? Exactly, so uh, Taz had to explain to us what happened, because everyone won the match. Alright, you know what, that's not the wrestler's fault, that's not the booking team's fault, that was just a fun spot, whatever, production thing, whatever. Didn't help me 
like the show anymore, though. Uh, <laughs> moving on, we had uh, Hardcore Country, Mickey James versus uh, Madison Rain for the D uh, not Deep titles, but the Knockouts uh, title. Uh, okay, so can I make a mention? Yeah. As a karaoke host, as soon as the girl starts singing country music, it just makes me nauseous. I can sympathize with that. <laughs> just letting you know that. I, I, I find that Mickey James' <laughs> new theme music has the same like car wreck capacity where like I cannot stop watching and listening to it, but at the same time it horrifies and repulses me. So I don't know what that says about me, but. Anyway, good for her. Yeah. At any rate, no, no, I'm happy she's having a good success with country music. It's good for her and all. I, for, and I like country music. I was a little baby, babies and Um, but uh, at any rate, I, anyway, at any rate, during the uh, we have all sorts of distractions here. During the uh, no pinball this week though. During the match, uh, we had the build up going into it being basically um, Nikki James versus Tara was the promo. They showed the thing that was like Nikki James Tara, Nikki James Tara, Nikki James Tara, Nikki James Tara, then a little bit of the mask ring. I wonder what's gonna happen in this one, guys. So, uh, we get to the match. Um, Mickey James comes out, and she does her little flippy-do, everyone's happy. Uh, Madison Rain comes out to possibly the worst theme music I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, I'm not Hardcore sure. Country? No, worse than Hardcore Country. Oh, God's theme? No, you see, they took Madison's <laughs> theme. The Right to Censor? That's, that's, <laughs> I like the Right to Censor theme. This, oh. was, this was, in fact, um, her instrumental theme, which I quite like, Madison Rain. Uh, and I don't know how recently this is. I haven't watched it in fact the last couple of weeks, but um, they have added lyrics to it. And the lyrics look like sound like they're sung by some sort of warbling wildebeest or something. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what's going on with that, but it's, uh, yeah, not a fan at any rate. Uh, so, my heart complaint. They get into the actual ring, and let me preface again by saying I'm a fan of Mickey James' ring work. I'm a fan of Madison Rain's uh, ring work. They're both very good female wrestlers. This match was terrible! I don't know what the hell went wrong. These are both very good workers, but they were fl they were missing each other. They were hitting these horrible, botched, awkward looking spots. Well, not necessarily botched, but really awkward, weird looking spots. There was one moment where uh, one of the, I forget which one, but some of them tried to hit with an elbow, and they kind of ended up getting tangled with each other and like stumbled around for like a few feet. It was just it was really sloppy looking for whatever reason. So at any rate, midway through or towards the end of the match, rather, Mickey James gets the upper hand. She hits um, her whatever it is finisher. Uh, and then suddenly Tara's music starts playing. Shocking, I know. Tara oh, comes man. out and is blocked by uh, security and referees like they do. And Nikki goes out and goes, Hey, you get away! You, 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 you don't <laughs> come near the ring. Um, so, Mickey James doing that. We see Madison Rain hop up in the ring and go, Hee 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 hee, I'm being healed. Literally, like, the most, like, shitting grin ever. Like, she's awesome. clawing a mustache, like... Exactly, much like, uh, no, certain film I work with, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not even going to say with a mustache. Anyway, story for another time. But this, uh, she did this. It was actually pretty cool. She was, she was like, hee hee hee, she had this heel grin, and I was like, oh man, so it's about to go down. And she stood up, and then she lay back down. I'm like, alright, she's playing possum. I'm on, I'm on board with this so far. I'm on board with this. Um, and Mickey James slides in the ring. Madison Rain gets up, and Falcon punches her. And that knocks Mickey James unconscious. Now, let me go back. Throughout this match, Madison Rain's been wearing this MMA style glove on one of her hands. She's punched Mickey James repeatedly throughout the match with it, and she sold it like it's a regular punch. Now, all of a sudden, for whatever reason, it's considered a loaded glove, and it's enough to knock her out one hand. Which, again, is another thing Taz had to explain to us because why the fuck would we know that? Because they've been selling it like it's a regular don't, punch. Don't, don't the referees check for that? You would think so, but. <laughs> So pretty much, this was like a WWE Divas match circa 2004. If that, it was really, really bad. I feel bad because they're both very good workers and they deserve better than me to say that they had a shit match, but they had a really shit match. And so, at any rate, that was the end. Madison Rain retained the title, which we do, awesome. Um, so the people continue. Um, next up on the card, we have... Next, next up, we had a segment actually with uh, AJ Styles and uh, Eric Bischoff and Bruce Flair, where it was basically revealed that AJ wasn't competing apparently given any real life injury in there. And Eric Bischoff gave basically the, the reason they gave is that AJ Styles for just like trying to help this kid who was in trouble doing something or another. And Eric Bischoff was like, No, I'm just doing it. And Eric Bischoff was like, I don't care about your kid, you're in force, and that should be your priority. And um, he was like, oh, oh, okay, you're a dick. And he knocked some stuff on his desk over and they had a little confrontation, um, which was pretty cool. And he's like, Fine, well, we'll figure something out. Um, next up was, you know what was next was, uh, Bully Ray versus Brother Devon. Uh, forgive me if I got the card order wrong, I might flip off a couple of the matches, but whatever. Um, yeah, so this ma this match was alright, although it made no sense, the ending. Um, basically, uh, it was kind of like, here's, here's the thing where it made no sense. It was like, 
I get it. These guys are having a big feud where they're like, this breakup is very volatile. They're like their brothers and Korea yeah. or whatever. And then they're going to beat the hell out of each other right on. Um, so they start the match in the ring, blah, blah, their feud. They're like punching each other. They get out of the ring and start brawling for well over 10 seconds. One, two, three seconds, so I see, and they're hitting each other against like stuff outside. I'm like, oh man, it's a no DQ match. Sweet. This is good. Like, these guys are beating the hell out of each other. It's awesome. Devon uh, gets back in the ring, and Brother Ray does something dirty to get the upper hand. He takes out a chain, he's going to wrap his fist with a hit Devon. Uh, but Devon hit, interrupts him, he doesn't do it. Devon picks up the chain and goes like, with it, like he's gonna hit Brother Ray with it. And I was starts, gonna clap for you right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he starts whipping Brother Ray with it. The ref goes, You can't do that. Ding, 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 ding. It's DQ. So I don't know if this was a no DQ match or a not no DQ match because there was about 19 different things they could have DQ'd. Either of these four matches where they would just go outside the ring and wrestle in the crowd. Oh, no, it was it was like that. Actually, there was, was a cool spot where a guy from the audience took off his shoe and handed to Devon and Devon like smacked the crap out of him with it. Oh, and he like smelled it. It was like, oh, it smells bad. And I was like, ah, eh, it was, it, was, it was funny, but I did, my only complaint is there's no consistency. My, one of the main complaints with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there's not much consistency. So I don't know if this is supposed to be WQ no or what the hell it was, because there was like nine different things that could be queued for before they actually called the spot. After the match, Devon continues to beat the shit out of uh, Ray. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so he beats the crap out of Brother Ray. Bra or Bully Ray. They, um, they break him up, um, and finally, uh, like, Bully Ray's like, get him away from me, get him away from me, get him away from me, and he's, like, cowering in the corner, and Devon's being held up, and finally Devon's like, alright, cool, cool, and after he's cool, uh, Bully Ray runs up and kicks him really hard in the crotch, and it was a pretty cool spot, actually. I want to go on record now as saying that, uh, Br uh Bubba Ray Dudley is probably one of the best heels in professional wrestling. He is astonishingly good at drawing heat, and that was awesome. Yeah, he is. I really like Bubba Ray Dudley. Um, but at any rate, um... So next up, and here's where I might mess up the order. No, 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 I'm gonna mess up the order. I gotta write that. It was tag team straps were next. So we had um, Beer Money Incorporated, although like Beer Money, I think I dropped the Incorporated. Yeah, but um, I think they Yeah. So representing Fortune Slash Immortal versus uh, Motor City Machine Guns in their continuing quest to have all of the titles. So the match, I mean, it's Motor City Machine Guns versus Beer Money. It would have been pretty hard for this to be a bad match. Um, they had a really, they had a really good match with a lot of spots and they were pretty cool. Uh, the, there was like, here's, here's what's gonna play, you can see I'm building up to a point later. Yeah. But, they both kicked out of everything. They hit each other with finishers, big moves, tons of stuff, they kicked out of everything. And, then the ending spot ended up being basically, that, uh, Alex Shelley was in the corner with, where the, uh, beer money were both in the way. And Saban comes across with a screaming, like, big kick to the corner, kind of like the uh, <coughs> drive-by kick that MVT does. Yeah. And Beer Money duck out of sight, he kicks a, uh, I think Alex Shelley, Alex Shelley, Shelley, I think I said Alex Shelley, sorry. Uh, Alex Shelley in the face, and Alex Shelley's like, ah, I got kicked in the face. And Saban's like, no, my friend. And then he gets rolled up and then and that's the, uh, oh, no, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, he does. He gets rolled up and pinned, and that was the end of the match. Uh, maybe they hit him with a finisher. I don't think they did. I think it was a roll up. Um, so that was the end of the match. Beer Money wins. Sorry? No, I'm, I don't have any. How, did, how can you kick out of like a million finishers and then just have it end in a roll? Thank you. That's what it was. Like, you just reminded me. That was another one Taz had to explain that because uh, we didn't. I couldn't see this at least. So apparently, it happened though. Was that um, they had they he grabbed the tights supposedly. I couldn't really? tell what was going on. That's what he says. Oh, he has leverage on the tights. That's well, roll ups happen all the time. You gotta accept it's that. Of all the you said suspend disbelief. Of all the finishes that I could complain about, that one I'm willing to let slide. Because honestly, it, it, could have, it, it was fine and it looked like it could have been fine. It, was, it honestly wasn't my biggest issue. Really. But the fact they kicked that at every inquiry of that leads up to a bigger point we have later. Just you wait. Uh, it's coming. I know I'm long with you, there. Anyway, next up we had uh, Doug Williams defending his uh, TV. 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 Uh, I, you changed so many times. I forget what's called. Is it TV? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I was gonna say it's the legendary. Yeah. Oh, yeah the, the big red belt. Whatever. That's all the prestige of our, our, our local video game title here. Yeah, it's true. I think yeah. our belt. I think our belt is slightly more steamy. Yeah, actually, yeah. I actually, I actually, I this is a five-year lineage of this. Exactly. So, I mean, we, we got a yeah. We got a belt now. Just got like. I think GCI don't play on GCI. People click on other things, not good things. At, 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 at any rate, though, uh, Doug Williams comes down, we're expecting him to face AJ Styles, and we heard earlier, which kind of hurt from the kid thing. Um, bum, 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 Abyss's music plays instead, and representing Immortal, he's the sub in Abyss comes out and squashes the ever loving shit out of Douglas Williams and pins him and wins the uh, uh, I'll be I'll be honest, I wasn't paying a tremendous amount of attention to this match because I was involved with more things at the time during this one. Um, so I don't necessarily know I'm not gonna go spot by spot what happened. But from 
I, I gathered Davis Williams got some offense, but on the whole, it was mostly just a good kick the crap out of him. Yeah. And then he won. Um, well, there you go. Just fine, whatever. He's a monster. He'll go with it. Um, so now, at this point in the show, uh, Immortal has every single belt. They've got the world title, they've got the exhibition title, they've got the TV slash legend slash whatever title, they've got the tag belts. And you're like, uh oh, you know, this is serious business, guys. Good for them. Belts. Yeah, Immortal's got all the belts. Well, I mean, is, they have control. Yep. And um, so, main event time, guys. It's going to be. Uh, oh, yeah, I missed, I missed we're missing, we're missing. Rob Van Dam. Oh, you're. Yeah. Oh my God! I, well, I, I knew the whole. I've been waiting show. this whole show. For I, you knew, I knew I was forgetting something. I'm like I'm forgetting something. Okay, yeah. so no, it's not main event time. It's uh, okay. So we see. I think this may have happened before one of the other matches I already talked about. Whatever. Uh, we see RVD in the back with Eric Bischoff, and he's like, "Listen, I don't care about this mystery opponent garbage. I want Hardy." And Eric Bischoff's like, "You want Hardy?" And RVD says, "I want Hardy." And oh uh, yeah, Bischoff's like, "All right, you got Hardy." I don't yes. think Rob Van Dam has ever. Watched an episode of WCW in his entire life. Apparently not. Because he did not see what I think everyone watching with half a brain cell saw coming. Which was that, of course, RVD goes out, he does his RVD, and the crowd is roaring RVD. He's the top heel, uh, top baby face in the company right now. RVD, RVD. His opponent is Matt Hardy. I hate wordplay. Okay, so. <laughs> it was not punny in the least. So. Actually, interesting fact. Um. Matt Hardy's Titantron, or whatever the TNA version is called, started like showing the Matt Hardy nameplate well before the music starts. Playing, oh, nice. which I found was kind of just funny to play with the earlier production stuff. That happens a lot. It though. was, it was actually a um, a moment later in this match where basically Taz started yelling at the production truck because he's like, "Hey, can we see that replay again?" They showed it from the wrong angle. He's like, "Yeah, thanks, guys." So apparently, <laughs> people within TNA also have criticism of the production truck. So it's not just me. Guys. I refuse to cut this video anyway. <laughs> yeah. so. That's true too. I'm we like, I'm not going to edit our talking. We can't really talk trash about anyone's production value, but oh well. I um, think ours is almost at TNA level, though. I think so. We're not going to cut away randomly to something yeah. wrong while I'm making. It We're not going to randomly go right into a, like a porn like for ten seconds. But we could all of a sudden have a pinball machine go off. That's true so, too. Okay, you know, fair enough. So, so, you know, so we're struggling. They're struggling. Everyone's struggling, but at any rate, we see. Oh man, I wouldn't expect anything weird to happen. Like, so no, basically, he's not um, a I, there's a little kid in the store. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine uh, at any rate, um, we had uh, Matt Hardy come out to um, a response that I can only compare to the excitement one might feel if they opened up their brown everyone bag and discovered that their peanut butter sandwich and the crust is cut off. It was about that much excitement. No crust. No crust. So you're like, oh boy, but. Not really excited enough to make big deals. Um, it was kind of like taking the hot girl sister to prom. Is that what you? There you go. Uh. <laughs> like that. That's, that's better than my example. But at any rate, so Matt Hardy comes out to his ovation. Um, he's wearing a very nice leather jacket, I've heard. And um, he takes it off, which is possibly the biggest mistake he made the entire night because he looks like. He swallowed the old Matt Hardy. <laughs> he is in horrendous shape. He's rocking some dreads, uh, which I gather was part of some sort of video he put up saying, hey, fans vote on my hairstyle, and apparently Matt Hardy had some fans because someone had to vote voted to him. That's terrible dreadlocks. <laughs> I got good news. If you were voted to have dreadlocks, those aren't your parents, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Well, they just wanted you to have dirty hair and to smell bad. <laughs> I don't think he needed much help smelling like that, just based on... Your brother already gets all the chicks, so don't yeah. worry about it. Just based on the fact that he's probably, like, downing, like, well, shots of vodka. Well, I like, mean, the, the, the dude looks like a wreck. I mean, I have to imagine he just smells like booze 24-7, but... I don't know. Maybe he's clean. Maybe those videos where he posted... Maybe let's change just go from the side effect to the Amy Winehouse effect. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, that would be exciting. Anyway, And you know what? They would do that. They would. It's TNA, so they'd be like, what pop culture? Don't worry, they'll put it together with Jay Wow now or something. Or yeah, yeah. But whatever the Jersey Shore person they just hired. So I'm sure Rob Van Dam took him out. You would be mistaken about that, sir. Uh, what? Oh man, <laughs> Matt uh, Matt Fat Hardy gets in the ring. He <laughs> no, flops, Fat Hardy. Yeah. Fat Hardy flops <laughs> around <laughs> like a beach whale. He looks absolutely dreadful. I he, love you, Matt. I'm he, sorry. He botches <laughs> everything. <I don't>. <laughs> <laughs> he bot he botches everything. He's horrible. He almost like decapitates RVD with a side effect at one point. And uh, <laughs> we had, um, sorry guys, we, we had, a uh, basically the ending spot came, mercifully, when RVD hit the five-star frog splash on Matt Hardy and got right. the pin, only awesome. that, um, his arm was under the rope, 
which the referee said, nope, you can't pin him, his arms broke the plane. You were complaining about this earlier, it's legit, that's the rule. And like they pointed out, well, normally they only call it if you're holding the rope, but that is an actual rule, broke the plane. Huh? Well, sometimes you're too tired to reach the rope and deserve to lose the match. Sure. And at any rate, Mike today <laughs> like literally, yeah. literally said, and this is another example, though, of the, co the commentators have to explain what's going on, because I doubt anyone in the arena had any of what's going on. Yeah. Um, they had, uh, they were like, nope, this thing's on the rope today. It's like, well, it's a judgment call on the refs part. Okay. Um, and then uh, RVD gets up and goes, Hey, what the heck, man? I thought that I won the match. I'm RVD. I took a five-star frog splash. That usually ends the match, right? Matt Hardy then uh, apparently forgets everything he learned in the Omega School um, and decides to stop selling the finishing move he just took. He gets right back up, hits a Trisco fate on RVD and pins him. Uh, RVD, at the last second, kicks his leg out and it goes under the rope and breaks the point. The ref doesn't see it. One, two, three. That's, um... That's it, Matt Hardy wins his debut match against our uh, TNA's top star. Granted, it was a dirty finish, but I don't think TNA grasps the fact that Matt Hardy is a joke, and this made RBD look absolutely terrible. Maybe we'll have a whole show talking about how they should replace referees and their rule calling oh, in wrestling. Yes. Oh, no, not even that. <laughs> they always have their backs turned. They just, they change We'll figure rules. this out soon. It, it's, and here, here's the thing. Shame. They're like, they're like, oh no, like, can, can we get a shot of that? Can like the ref review it? And they're like, no, we don't have a, we don't have the correct shot to look at that. And then Taz is like, well, can we shoot this angle? Oh, thanks guys, that's the wrong angle. And there was this whole debacle where they were trying to show the replay to show that RVD had his foot under the rope and didn't quite get it for the first few attempts they had. Oh, great. It just, it looked really sloppy and terrible. So, and, wow. I yeah. I mean, it's, it's just bad. You know what? The fact that Matt Hardy, like, this whole thing's done, I'm glad that she does it. Oh, dude, oh, that's what I was all for. <laughs> I, I like that back. <laughs> that was a joke in bad taste. <laughs> yeah. I, I would put it this way. I would rather have Matt Hardy get himself in I'm the position good. where... Where, no, get himself in the position where he can go to TNA and people want to see people want to yeah. see them. Yeah, I want right TNA on. to get ratings. I want people to want to see the Hardy Boys versus uh, uh, Motor City Machine but you're, you're versus Weird Money. We want, though. You know, I'll even take you know what Jeff Hardy is the world champion. What we were talking about earlier, yeah. but but in the last episode that he's what. having issues. When, they're trying. Yeah. They're when, trying. When, when Matt Hardy left WWE, one of the things I was saying uh, to a lot of the people I talked to wrestling about regularly was the best thing they could do is uh, sign Matt Hardy because then they could put the Hardy Boys on a show and that's going to draw ratings. At the time, I didn't expect our, uh, Jeff Hardy to be the main focal point of the, the show, which kind of ruins that plan. I mean, it doesn't ruin that plan, it changes that plan, but I feel like the Hardy Boys drawing on a card on their own is enough where someone would be like, you don't need to put a belt in ball, they'll be like, oh man, the Hardy Boys, I'd watch that match. Or, like, Generation B versus the Hardys, Motor City Machine Gun versus the Hardys, yeah, Everybody versus yeah. the Hardys. Yeah. Those are all matches I want to see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Granted, I would prefer Matt get a little better shape, but... Or, cause he, cause honestly, he says like, he has some surgery thing. That, but that's the thing, and I, I heard that, I was like, oh, okay, cool, so whatever, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I love Raven, and I'll admit that um, he doesn't look his best, but he says, oh man, I have, I have like a gastric issue, whatever, and he still can go in the ring, though. It's not even so much about losing the weight for me about Matt, it's just if you can get in a physical condition where you can actually, like, wrestle correctly, because what he did last night was really lackluster. And not indicative of the man who will not die and virtual one and all that. The good stuff. news about this is that very few people actually saw it happen. So it'll oh, be a good shame. They'll forget it. They'll they, forget it, and when the Hardy Boys reunite... Yeah. It, it, down I also want to mention something yeah. that when oh, when, uh, when it comes to like Jeff Hardy and his problems and things like that, I mean, you wonder, you know, a lot of people watch wrestling, uh, and, you know, a lot of them follow the internet, like the people watching right now, but there's, there's got to be, you know, kids out there that don't care, that are younger, and things like that, that just are excited to see Jeff Hardy. That's true. Um, you know, maybe not excited to see him tell them off and boom, but... <laughs> But, I mean, it, he's still there. It's still, yeah, the no. idea of having the Hardy Boys in TNA is, is a better idea than some of them. I agree. I, I think that the company in the long run will be stronger for having them there. I just hope that they actually get to the condition and the shape they need to be in. Well, not so much Jeff. Jeff's basically fine in terms of conditioning. But um, I, I hope it works out, because honestly, I'd like to see TNA do better and be a better product. It's just not right now. It's, it's, it's the same feeling for me now, though. It's not like, oh, it's not like when Christian came back to WWE. Oh, Edge and Christian versus Hardy Boys. That'd be awesome now. And then that uh, never... Yeah, because, and that was another Matt instance where you have a guy who's just been pushed so hard, uh, and it's not really anyone's fault, it's just something that oh, happened, yeah. where you're like, you can't really do Edge and Christian, you could, but you can't really do Edge and Christian, like, and have a free night, have a big deal, because one of them's on one level, one level of this person is being on another, and you kind of equalize that one way or the other. Get them there, do anything significant with them, like a tag team title run or whatever. But I digress, um, we gotta finish up the recap of Genesis. So, we're looking here at the main event, right there. the uh, Sega Genesis 16-bit graphics. Yep. The main event of the show 
was Mr. Anderson, formerly Mr. Ken Kennedy of WWE fame, versus Matt Morgan, also formerly, well, not fame, but he was in WWE. Well, he was in there for a second. Yeah, he was, I'm, in the I'm pretty sure he was in the Royal Rumble at least once. He, so, he used to have a sick, big, sick move. Like, it was like kind of a, a suplex was. into a... No, no, I, I really, lo I really like that Morgan. I gotta tell you, like, if there TNA... Was, and he was on one of the teams. I'm trying to get one of you're right. But, but anyway, anyway but we, yeah, know, yeah, we, know, we know who Matt Morgan is. I think that Matt Morgan has been made a star by TNA over the last couple of months. I think that he's been he's, close. he's been pushed, but he, they have failed to make him a star. I think they've made they him a main event and he's a star. I think that they could have consistently pushed him and made him one of their top guys, and they don't. They haven't done anything to do with He doesn't have the, I'm at the airport and I get autographs ass like in the, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I, I don't <laughs> see Matt, Har I mean Matt Hardy, uh, Matt Morgan versus Jeff Hardy, and I don't think, like, oh man, it's like this guy's going to take down Jeff and me and me. Big deal. I, I see a guy where I'm like, well, I guess we need to play for the week this time. Yeah. But, and it was a shame, because he really could be the top guy, and Jim Cornette's been saying that for years. Anyway. So, um, so we, guys we have this started. match. Um, they beat the hell out of each other. They have this pretty long match, and they they kill each other. Um, Matt Morgan hits uh, the carbon footprint like three times on Kennedy. Kennedy gets out of everything. Kennedy hits his thing on Morgan and some other ridiculous high spots, and they, they just big some moments where these guys kick out. Now, here's the thing for me. Throughout the entire show, here's the point of the bullet too, people kicked out of everything. Now... I'm fine with that for a big show. You're like, oh man, you're gonna kick out as a big moment. You're like, oh, this is it, one, two, three, no, and you get that big crowd reaction. Here's the thing: during this match, that didn't happen, and I think that's largely well, two reasons. One, the impact zone, the impact zone's terrible. Two, the there goes our ratings in Florida. Here's what Florida. It's ridiculous. Who wants to see At any rate, Florida's where they have SCW. They'll watch that. So anyway, so they had um. They had everyone throughout the night kick out of finishers in big spots, so it wasn't a big deal to see. Like, if you're like, oh man, the carbon footprint, Kennedy's dead, he's at one, two, oh, 